And we're back on Global TV Talk Show. I'm in uh, Palm Desert, California today. And our special guest is Stephen Howard. And he's coming to us uh, live from Mexico City, correct? I am indeed, but I miss the Palm Desert, Palm Springs area, particularly this time of year. Yeah, that's perfect. Okay, so you have uh, successfully published uh, Humany humanityleadership.com and the book won uh, plaudits and praise from all kinds of people and you won a gold medal congratulations from the um, nonfiction authors association so cheers well thank you <laughs> thank you sir most appreciated yeah well that's cool so um Hopefully that's gone into your bank account, not just to your head. And, uh, and you, I see you're very busy, so I'm sure that's positive. Yeah, they, they, we've seen some good book sales. We're seeing some good reviews from people around the world. Um, you know, you never get rich writing books and, unless you have certain names, but uh, particularly writing business books. But uh, yeah, people are uh, people are reacting positively to the whole human leadership concept. So I'm very very pleased, very proud about that. Okay, so how does this relate to um, lousy workplaces, toxic workplaces, toxic people? Well, I think that's one of the reasons I wrote the book, quite frankly, as I was seeing an increase in people complaining about the toxic toxicity, that's a hard word to say, toxicity in their workplaces, um, you know, talking about bullying bosses, um, bosses with no EQ, no emotional intelligence or emotional quote. And uh, so, yeah, so I wrote the book. And so I think it's very related. Uh, unfortunately, we're seeing an, an increase in toxic workplaces, not just the United States, but around the world. So toxic means what? Well, you, you know, I, I think for most people, they would say toxic workplaces are places where you see physical violence or, you know, overt racial discrimination, you know, sexual harassment, uh, bullying, um, particularly bullying that where people get away with it. Uh, I would suggest we need to kind of lengthen that definition and talk more about co company cultures that are just aggressive or uh, microaggressions, uh, which unfortunately are more commonly experienced by women in the workplace. And so just thinking about Everything that happens in the workplace that has negativity, to me, creates a toxic workplace. So within a sales environment, uh, I bring that up because that's what, what I know over the years. It's a, it's a crappy place to be when you have a competitive, aggressive uh, atmosphere within that structure, and it's encouraged through the strong-armed tactics of some sales managers and uh, insider relationships negate quality. The idea is just make sales yeah. and that's what we want, more sales. And that's just a lousy place to live. It is. And I think, you you know, and I, I was also in sales for, for many years and um, hopefully I wasn't that kind of a sales leader with my people. But uh, I know I one time I of the several bosses I had, I did have one of those kind of bosses. And I think what we're seeing today now, Ed, is it's not just in the sales department. It's just this overt focus on results only and just results, 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 whatever it happens to be, whether it's, um, you know, in the production department, whether it's in the shipping department, whether it's in recruitment um, for part of HR, just everyone focusing on results, 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 and not understanding the impact that that focus is having on the workforce. And that's, I believe this is what has led dramatically to the uh, great resignation trends, the quiet quitting trends, and and now we have a, a new word in the, in the literature called uh, resent. Resenting, 
I can't even say it. Re <laughs> resenteeism, like presenteeism. So resenteeism is a, a word that uh, describes uh, people who stay in unsatisfying jobs just because they have a lack of better options or because they fear jobs insecurity. Uh, so what I'm seeing is there's like there's a dichotomy in the workplace. There's one part of the workforce which basically says, you know what? I'm not putting up with this. I'm quitting. I'll find another job. And in certain industries, they do. I mean, Silicon Valley, people are finding new jobs within weeks, not months, within weeks. And then you've got, a, and then you've got another portion of the workforce over here who don't have those kind of opportunities, and they stay in unsatisfying jobs. But when other people leave that company, they get loaded on with more work and more responsibility, and it becomes even less of a satisfying workplace. So it's a it's it's kind of like a bipolar labor market uh, that we have in today's world. Okay, so humanyleadership.com. This is what the how to of what's in your book. Yeah, the the the. Website just gives a little bit of insight into uh, what's in the book. I mean, obviously, I'm not everything's on the website. I want people to buy the book and read it or, or bring me in as a consultant to talk about how to implement it in their workplaces. Um, but, you know, on the website, I talk about some of our leadership models are outdated. They're obsolete. Um, the, uh, we, you know, what, the most obvious one is the, the, you know, this concept that leaders should manage people. Well, no one wants to be managed in the workforce. People want to be led and empowered and, and trusted. Um, and another part of this, which is not on the website, but as I talk with you about it, is when we're seeing these massive firings, these massive layoffs by Amazon and Meta and uh, Google and other organizations, I mean, the Amazon one just sticks out to me in that trying to pacify the employees who did not get laid off the employees who are staying at Amazon, the CEO and the HR department kept focusing on their, their terminology, their verbiage was all about, we have to get our head count in line. Well, to me, that's the wrong attitude. I mean, you don't, you don't manage a head count uh, or you, you don't lead a head count. You lead people. I mean, they're, you're laying off human beings. And I think that's part of the mindset change um, that we need to have if we want to reduce these toxic workplaces. But you know, when the leaders are only talking about headcounts and budgets and, and things of that nature, um, that's that's going to lead to some of these things that we're seeing, like drama and unsatisfying jobs and um, lack of interest, disengaged employees, uh, which we're seeing increase. And I think our leadership is to blame for this in a lot of respects. So I want to jump aside for a moment and just ask you about about yourself and some of these new things I see you and in getting involved with. Um, I saw with uh, with a variety of others. Uh, one of them was um, a lecture series for like thirty eight dollars or something uh, mm -hmm. on on a specific topic. So in the past, uh, not you, but like for me and and others. Um, how do you charge people to attend something, <laughs> even though you're you're worth more than thirty eight dollars? <laughs> I mean, if you if you get a thousand, that's a pretty good paycheck. Yeah, that'd be a good day. <laughs> I'm a, I'm testing out a new platform. There's a new platform called Leader Jam, and the beauty of the platform is they handle all the billing and everything. So, and I'm doing things that are not directly related to my consultancy or my coaching. So some of this is based on previous books. I'm doing a, a, a webinar next week about building and maintaining long-term brain health, just because it's a passionate subject of mine. You know, yeah, as you, I saw that. As you know, my father had early Alzheimer's before he passed away. And and uh, the research I did for a previous book shows that brain health is a lifestyle disease. It's not genetics necessarily. Uh, we can't necessarily prevent it yet, but we can reduce our risk for it. So yeah, yeah, I'm charging people to come to that webinar to learn about how to take care of their long-term brain health. Um, um, and I think you're right. I think that one is $38. I'm doing another one on how people tr can better transition into their first time managerial or supervisor position. And then I'm doing a third one about how stress and anxiety impacts your decision making. And particularly if you're an entrepreneur or manager or leader, how that is, um, you know, you 
you can't grow your business as well or can't grow your department or can't achieve your results when you're making less than optimal decisions. So I'm just testing it out, different price points. Um, you know, I've got a lot of knowledge there. I can't give it all away for free. <laughs> I, I applaud you, and that's you're you're being a uh, bulldozer. I'm following right behind you by setting up a toll gate on my virtual conferences. Yeah, and then, you know, there's an, you know, I we'll see do, what happens. Yeah, you know, and I'm I'm happy to do some free. Well, I'm doing a free symposium next week. Um, there's a thing called the Achievement Symposium. I saw two, that. Two hours a day, Monday to Friday. So this is like June. Uh, fourth to ninth, I believe. Um, I'm speaking on the Thursday one. So every morning for two hours, they have different speakers speaking on various aspects of personal achievement, personal success. And again, I'm doing the same thing. I'm going to talk about um, better decision making when it comes to your personal goals and how to you know be resilient and, and rebound from you know we all go through ups and downs when we achieve you know go after our personal goals and or professional goals and so yeah that one's uh I think a 25 30 minute talk I'll give for free next week on Thursday and uh, so yeah so it's a combination just trying to help people you know that's kind of what my role is these days I believe is to take the knowledge that I've built up from the research I've done from my various books and, and try and cascade that to, to people and, you know, help them build better lives. So uh, um, you you met one of my uh, speakers from London, um, Annalisa, mm -hmm. and she and I were talking yesterday and she uh, had words of praise for you and giving her some advice and welcoming her into a, a show that you're doing. So uh, thank you for that. Uh, no, she's a lovely lady, uh, you know, and, and, you know, she's prognosticating, I guess might be the right word, but about ethics. And I think that's another important part, uh, uh, part of what we need to be talking about today is uh, getting back to some true ethics in our, per in our personal lives as well as our leadership lives. So, uh, yeah, I've invited, I'm hosting a show in July on a uh, streaming network service about the future work. And so I've invited her to come and talk about uh, the role that ethics and other things play and her passion for, you know, peace and harmony. She has a similar viewpoint as me about building harmony in the workplace. So I'm going to have her come on that show and, and talk about those things in, in July. And on June 28, uh, you're both on our Global New York show. Oh, great. Yeah, June 28. Um, so that's like a stellar cast of characters <laughs> who've been able being able to put together and uh the and you met also in the london meeting that we did on may 9 uh that was uh my first live event in three and a half years mm. uh on may 9 in london uh with hsbc hosting and um Incidentally, they've agreed to uh, do it again with me, so I'm really happy about that. Uh, that's a, a really a great leverage. Great. Uh, but more on that later. So as we, we come to a close here, this quick uh, catch-up conversation, uh, I welcome you back to the series, uh, Striving and Thriving. And if we could find time uh, over the summer to do a couple um, it, it ties in exactly with what we're both doing, but with different ways and different uh, methods. So yeah, oh, I'd think love about to. that. I'd love to. I think the other idea I'll put in your head here uh, publicly is uh, because I'm in Mexico City and I happen to be an HSBC customer here in Mexico City, we should do a, a live from Mexico City and get them to support that. They're one of the major financial institutions here. Uh, I, I'm Sign me up. <laughs> wherever, you, where, wherever. Here. <laughs> yeah, I know. I, I fly. Uh, I'll do it. I'll do yeah. it. Uh, I'll bring Joe in. Good. Uh, yeah. Um, so, you, are you going to be there all summer? I think so. I've got a couple of trips planned. I'm actually giving a um, a talk, a keynote talk at the National Association of Home Builders Executive Conference in Cincinnati in August. And so it's going to be fun. I've never been to Cincinnati. I've been to other parts of Ohio, but I've been to Cincinnati. Mid America, Mid America. So, yeah. So looking forward to that and and talking with their group. And um, but you know, it you know as we you know we, we talked at the beginning of the, this about workplace and everything. And I don't think people understand the impact that these workplaces are having. So um, 
you know, I've read some research kind of preparing to talk with you this morning, and I was shocked. One in three, 33% of those under 40 uh, admit to quiet quitting. They admit to it that they're actually quite and they're and they're there's and when asked why they're saying excessive workloads was like 74 percent and lack of motivation 46 percent now here's the thing people and then people are going to blame yeah the younger generation they're lazy they don't want to work blah 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 but then another research study shows that 40 percent of working adults have a side hustle that they're not telling their bosses about so if i put those two together i don't think they're lazy and they're obviously they can self-motivate to go do another side hustle. So going, so if I take those two nuggets of information from two different research studies, I'm saying our, our workers are not lazy. They're not motivated. And who's not motivating them? A leadership. And why? Because leadership is focusing on your results, not focusing on developing them. Um, and that was a there's a third research study that that said um the number one reason that people were quitting their jobs was a lack of, of development opportunities. So you take those three nuggets, they're overworked, uh, they're not being motivated in the workplace, they're not being developed in the workplace, and they're, 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 40% of them are doing a side hustle. So they're not lazy, they're self-motivating themselves to do other things. So there is a workplace issue. There's a, it's an environmental issue in our workplaces that people need to start talking about. and. Uh, and hopefully, uh, humanity and other leadership ideas will help people solve that. So um, I'm not ready to fully announce uh, a schedule, but uh, it uh, I, yesterday I was invited to consider coming into New York area twice on uh, October and again in November to do uh, to produce a live meeting uh, with another company. And uh, one will be in Stamford, Connecticut, which is just north of Manhattan. Mm -hmm. uh, but it's a, it's a business center uh, encompassing Fairfield County and uh, Westchester County, New York. And Stamford's right in the middle there. And that'll be in October, early October. And then uh, we'll do live and virtual to expand the reach for the speakers and for the sponsors and of course for global tv and then the same company uh, will host me in midtown manhattan uh, during the second week of november uh, so more about all that later great uh, well the june 28 event will just be virtual excellent well i'll, I'll like you'll jump on an airplane to come to mexico i'll jump on an airplane my my lady adriana she'll 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 join me in new york city anytime any day any weather so new new york and san francisco are the two places that if you ever do a live show she'll make sure i show up <laughs> so she can be there all right count on it uh so th that'll be during the second week of uh november and during that time of year it'll be chilly but um, uh, the city you get all decked out with, yeah. you know, with holiday uh, flags and plants and holly. And it's just beautiful time of year to be there. In Macy's Parade. So thank you for being again on Global TV. I know you have to get to another event and uh, we'll get this program to you uh, later today. Okay, Greg, yeah, take, take care. Enjoy that wonderful desert environment, desert weather. Yeah, we've got some friends coming over. We're going to do a barbecue out here on the deck and uh, overlooking the golf course. And Lovely. So how many times have you been up on that aerial tramway up behind Palm Springs? Oh, I've been up probably five, maybe six times. I mean, yeah, I've gone up couple times just to enjoy i mean particularly when i in august it's nice to go up there in august because it's about 25 degrees cooler than mm. than the basin of uh, palm springs but yeah yeah you often you also when it, when you have uh visitors visiting it's 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 well worth it it's going up there um um have a cup of coffee up there or if it's cold weather you have a, a nice hot chocolate They've got one of the best hot chocolates in the palm desert area and so yeah it's worth it it's nice up there nice and cool um so yeah take advantage of it well we're thinking about doing that okay mm -hmm. take care have a good All one right. thanks ed take care cheers thank you bye-bye